Hello. Welcome to another session of Digital Surgical Pathology Sign Out and Review, Slide Review with uh, Dr. Lewis Hassel. I'm coming to you from the campuses of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a collaborative effort of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our case today comes from the realm of GYN pathology. A 29-year-old woman uh, who uh, has a unilateral adnexal mass and an elevated HCG suggesting that she is pregnant. She's got some of those symptoms. Well, evaluation uh, includes, of course, the possibility that she has an ectopic pregnancy, and that then leads to uh, um, consideration of what may be going on in the endometrium. So a curatage is performed, um, and we receive multiple fragments of endometrium, as you see here, uh, areas of hemorrhage, perhaps some necrosis, some glandular tissue, but uh, no uh, villi. Uh, however, as we look at this uh, uh, glandular tissue here, uh, we note that it's uh, very uh, densely packed glands. Uh, they are uh, somewhat uh, secretory in appearance, uh, but really minimal amount of stroma here uh, between the glands. And quite remarkable clear cytoplasm uh, with uh, prominent uh, borders between the cells. Uh, a little bit of nuclear pleomorphism uh, and atypia, maybe a few apical cells here, uh, variability in size and shape of the nuclei. Um, and so uh, uh, the resident who brought this case to me wondered if this was a uh, secretory hyperplasia. Um, well, uh, this is a great example uh, of a hypersecretory endometrium uh, that can be seen in patients who uh, are undergoing uh, uh, a dramatic shift in their hormonal status and have uh, the uh, concomitant uh, uh, changes uh, then happening in their endometrium without uh, any progestational or without any significant progestational uh, impact on these uh, glands. So this is a wonderful example of uh, Arius Stella reaction or hypersecretory endometrium. Uh, in this case, relatively little uh, stromal decidual change. As we look around, we see very little uh, decidualization, maybe a little bit here um, with that edema and so forth. Um, and maybe some over here in these uh, more necrotic areas um, where uh, there might be some of that reaction there. Uh, however, by and large, it's all hemorrhagic and necrotic tissue with this very pronounced hypersecretory uh, pattern uh, that forms a nearly back-to-back -back glandular tissue. So the area stellar reaction is a pseudoneoplastic change uh, that occurs in the endometrial tissue. Now, it can occur uh, most commonly, of course, in the endometrium, but anywhere where you have endometrial tissue and endometriosis, uh, in the ovary, in the endometriotic cysts, uh, other sites could also have this sort of change. And as I noted, it's usually related, related to very dramatic shifts in the hormonal status during pregnancy or with gestational neoplasia. Uh, very unusual for this to happen with exogenous uh, hormone uh, treatment. But the, bit, the differential diagnosis, of course, includes hyperplasia and several types of carcinoma uh, as well as uh, microglandular hyperplasia. One significant pitfall here to be aware of is that if we're thinking clear cell carcinoma because of the clear cytoplasm, nuclear atypia, prominent uh, cell membranes, uh, NAPSIN A or HNF1 beta will not help us uh, because both of these will be positive uh, in both area stella and in clear cell carcinoma. So. Uh, don't be tempted to resort to brown stains to uh, prove your point of benignity. Go with the clinical history, go with the morphology, um, and the age of the patient, of course, a very big help uh, in this category. Here's another example, uh, maybe a little bit easier. Here we see uh, quite uh, marked uh, stromal decidual change, a lot of uh, decidualization to the stroma, uh, and we can see this sort of cobblestone effect here. Uh, these glands do not look particularly abnormal, uh, but there are a few glands where we begin to get 
some of this sort of atypia and a little bit of hobnailing type of reaction as we see here. Um, and so uh, sometimes the uh, uh, change can be fairly localized uh, just to the glandular tissue uh, with some associated atypia, whereas in other areas like here, uh, we see the more characteristic um, dilation of the glands, prominence of the uh, uh, nuclear features, not as much clear change to the cells here, although here we see some. And again, you can see how this might be confused for uh, clear cell carcinoma, given the atypia and given uh, the uh, uh, prominent cell borders, maybe a few hobnail type cells here and there. Uh, this is a, an easy to understand pitfall uh, that uh, we need to avoid. Uh, and again, the clinical history, uh, not the immunohistochemistry are what are gonna save us uh, in this search circumstance. So that's our case for today, an area stellar reaction, hypersecretory endometrium with a decidual reaction. Uh, and in this case, uh, certainly rule out ectopic gestation uh, in a patient with an adnexal mass. Thank you for joining us. And if you like this, uh, please uh, comment on any other pitfalls you've encountered in uh, pregnant or uh, pseudo-pregnant patients. Um, and if you like the channel, we hope that you'll subscribe so that you won't miss uh, future releases. And please tell your friends about it, fellow colleagues in training or uh, peers that you meet. Uh, we're happy to take suggestions for additional topics um, and uh, always welcome your comments and feedback uh, on what we're doing. So until next time, thanks so much for joining us.